Hey up guys, so continuing the Venice Film Festival coverage, today's movie I'm going to be discussing on the channel is the latest film from Greek filmmaker Yorgos Lanthimos. That's right, today I'm going to be talking about Poor Things. I was so excited for this film, guys. This is probably my number one most anticipated film from the Venice lineup. I am a huge Lanthimos fan and I was hoping he would deliver the goods and boy did he. Like the many amalgamated animal creatures that you'll see in this film, such as swan dogs, pig chickens and goat dogs, Yorgos Lanthimos fuses together the weird and the wonderful with such beautiful artistry. His Frankenstein's monster is a Frankenstein's masterpiece. Poor Things is a film which makes you laugh, makes you feel, and makes you think. Poor Things is written by Tony McNamara and is an adaptation of the late great Alistair Gray's novel of the same name and tells the story of Bella Baxter, played by a fearless Emma Stone. Set in a world that's similar to ours, but a bit off kilter and a bit steampunk, Bella Baxter is actually the the creation of Dr. Godwin Baxter, who's played by Willem Dafoe. Without giving too much away, Godwin put the brain of a fetus in the body of an almost deceased Jane Doe and reanimated her back to life and named her Bella. So at the start of the film, Bella has the mind, motor skills, people skills, and language of an infant, but in a grown woman's body. But as Bella matures, she has a curiosity about the world and an insatiable appetite for adventure. So she leaves her home in London to explore the world, visiting places like Lisbon, Athens, France, along with a sleazy lawyer called Duncan Wedderburn, who's played by Mark Ruffalo, and on the journey, Bella learns about all aspects about her body, the way the world works, and about life itself. In a nutshell, it's a quirky, oddball, coming-of-age tale that is stupendously entertaining, but what really surprised me about Poor Things was just how many layers there were to this film. This film has so much to say about what it means to be alive. A large portion of that has to go to the incredible writing and also Emma Stone's committed performance as Bella. I related so much to this film through the character of Bella. This might actually be my favorite performance of Emma Stone's to date, and I think that's because of how free she is in this part, how brave she is to let go and just give it everything she's got. Watching her growth, her character development, it's it's a delightfully rewarding experience for the viewer. There's so many things to praise about this performance, like the way that she embodies Bella with this carefree innocence and inquisitiveness of youth. It's joyful watching her discover the sweet pleasures of being human, whether it's Food, getting drunk, traveling, nature, music, dancing, sex, or as she likes to call it, furious jumping. <laughs> My new favorite expression for sex is furious jumping. It's one of those performances where all five of the human senses are actively engaged, like watching her smell, taste, touch things for the first time. It's all new and exciting. But with maturity also comes the ugliest stuff, like anger or disappointing sexual encounters, or annoyance at crying children in restaurants, or social inequality and poverty. Bella meets this self-proclaimed cynic character called Harry Astley, who's played by Jared Carmichael, who shows her that life can be cruel. Catherine Hunter stops by for a small but memorable part as this brothel owner called Swiney, who beautifully surmises to Bella that life is meant to be hard, and we need to go through horror and degradation and sadness in order for us to understand the world, and only then can the world be ours. That's what I loved about this film, is that it reassured me that even when the shiny optimism of youth and innocence fades away with adulthood, and we go through a dark patch when we question the world, that it does get better, like there's there's light and wisdom at the end of all the darkness. We have to be subjected to the harsh realities of life because it immunizes us, it makes us stronger. There's one line of Bella dialogue which really spoke to me in this film where she says, I am a flawed, experimental person. There is so much profound wisdom and truth in that. Like, we are all just works in progress and we're all trying to grow and be better. I've said this before and I will say it again, but good movies entertain, but great movies not only entertain, but they get you thinking, get you questioning. And trust me, I am going to be thinking about poor things for weeks. My only negative of this film is that I do think some people are going to find it a bit too long, but I didn't really have that problem because I was so enamored watching it. Like, every scene was 
fascinating, and I couldn't wait to see where it was going next. But yeah, I can totally understand why some people would find it too long. There were a few moments where I was like, oh, the story's still going. All right, now we do need to discuss its Oscars chances. I was kind of nervous for poor things because I, looking from the trailer, I did think, oh, is this gonna be an Academy-friendly movie? Because let's face it, Yorgos Lanthimos is an acquired taste, okay? He is weird, he's peculiar. Not all of his movies are accessible to the masses, not say like the bawdy comedy that was the favorite. So I was nervous for Poor Things, but I it can relax now because I do think Poor Things is one to watch out for. Let's face it, the Academy isn't always very partial to genre films. And a good example from this year is Bo is Afraid. That's a movie which I don't think is gonna get any Oscar nominations, even though it would be worthy of some. Uh, because of how weird it is. I think it's just too out there for the Academy's taste. And I'll say this, Poor Things is weird, but for all its weirdness, at the center is an ooey-gooey, wholesome humanity core. Like, it's something that people can click with, that voters will connect to, more so than just a weird for the sake of weird movie like Bo is Afraid. I do think that this film is gonna resonate with voters and I think it's gonna get a fair amount of nominations. The categories where I feel like Poor Things has to be a dead cert for a nomination. Obviously, the divine costume work from Holly Waddington. Like Bella herself, the costumes have an evolution in this film. It's a movie with outrageous silhouettes, poofy sleeves, corsets, lots of ruffles. Absolutely gorgeous costume work. Watch out, Barbie, this could be a main competition. Another dead set, production design for Shona Heath and James Price. These sets are incredible. They are so detailed. My eyes just adored looking around the set design when Bella is exploring places like Lisbon or the interior of the ship. They built a world that you actually want to go explore yourself. Cinematography for Robbie Ryan, he got the nomination for the favorite, he's gonna get it for this. A lot of this movie's personality comes from Robbie Ryan's choices with lighting and his lenses. And same goes with the score for Jerskin Fendrix. I love his motif that you can hear in the trailer. It kind of sounds like a broken music box. It's a score which feels experimental, which is very fitting given that Bella is an experiment who is experimenting herself. There's lots of janky piano keys and plodding brass noises. It's all really well done. It might be a little too odd for the Academy, but I hope they dig it. Makeup and hair could happen because Willem Dafoe is covered in prosthetics, but also Bella's hair is very much a part of her character that also has an evolution within the film. As for the above the line categories, I think best adapted to screenplay seems assured, which would be lovely because it'll give a posthumous nomination for Alistair Gray. Yes to best picture, editing is definitely on the table depending on how the film's received. And if the Academy likes this film, then yes to best director for Yorgos Lanthimos, okay? He is the captain of this weird ship and he just sails it so smoothly and effortlessly. He's not a lock for me yet, but I think he stands a decent chance of getting in. Now, as for the performances, this is where I'm a little nervous because of the fact that it's a genre film and these are some out of the box performances from the actors, but it could happen. Emma Stone has to be in the running for best actress. It's arguably her finest performance ever because of how much growth and transformation her character undergoes. There is a lot for her to work with, like with the physicality, the ability to be funny and emotional, and just how fearless Emma Stone was with what the script demanded from her, okay? She goes for it. And I think the Academy might want to reward her for her efforts, even if the performance is somewhat unconventional. I feel the same way of Emma Stone getting into Best Actress as I do for Yorgos getting into Best Director, okay? Can definitely see it happening, absolutely deserved, but part of me is concerned it might just be a bit too weird. But we shall see. As for supporting actor, there is definitely a case to be made for Mark Ruffalo and Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe has the tender, pseudo father daughter creator creation relationship with Emma Stone okay he is the heart of this film however mark ruffalo has more screen time than Willem Dafoe and is very memorable as the dandy duncan his gesticulations are some of the funniest moments in this film the only thing that might be working against mark ruffalo though is his accent isn't perfect i swear there was one moment towards the end where i thought he sounded australian when he's meant to be like posh English. But if anything, his wonky accent actually kind of works for his peacocking character, okay? He's very pompous, 
always putting on a front of sophistication. And so it, it makes sense when his character is frustrated that he might slip out of this facade of someone who appears posh, but might not be as posh as they think they are. So yeah, like The Favourite, I am anticipating there will be quite a few Oscar nominations for Poor Things, but I do want to hear from you guys. What do you think Poor Things is going to be nominated for at the Oscars? How many and which categories? Whatever you have to say, let me know in the comment section down below. All right, shall we ask them three questions? Firstly, would I watch this again? Absolutely, I adored this film. I cannot wait to watch it over and over again. I feel like this is a film, like, the more times you watch it, the more you peel back and discover something new with it. So, yeah, can't wait to watch it again. And it's definitely a film I'm going to be adding to my collection, putting it on the wall whenever I can get a copy of it. Question two, do I recommend it for you guys? I know that Poor Things isn't going to be for everybody. Having said that, this is definitely one of those films I am going to be pushing on my friends and family to go watch, okay? If you know me in real life, I'm about to get very insufferable with how much I'm gonna be talking about this film and how much I'm gonna be pushing it on you. So yeah, if I feel this way about this, film and I want to share it with my friends and family, of course I want to recommend people to go see it. Go see it in the cinema with an audience, okay? It's definitely going to be in my top 10 favourite films of 2023. It is a rollicking good time and yeah, it's a film I think everyone should watch at least once before they die. So yeah, highly recommend it. And third question, what score to give out of 10? You probably already sussed this out from the movie you gotta see before you die classification, but yeah, Poor Things is absolutely a 10 out of 10 for me. Freaking adored this movie. But yeah, as always guys, it's just one book's opinion. I do want to hear from you. Are you excited for poor things? Have you seen it? If you have, what do you make of this film? What do you have to say? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, help me out with the thumbs up button for more movie, TV, and Oscars related content. Don't forget to click subscribe. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. For more things related to movie, TV, the Oscars, and Venice Film Festival coverage, I'm Luke Airfield, and I'll see you next time.